everybody. It's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls, and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 16th, 2020. We do have St. Patrick's Day this week, so happy St. Patty's Day, okay? But more importantly than that, a lot of you have been asking for me to address that has been going around. I'm going to get into that in just a moment, but I want to explain why now might be the time to talk about that. Um, so what we're going to do here, I'm gonna, I have a couple of announcements. I'm going to get those out of the way. We're going to go into the message. I will be pulling cards. Now, if you did find your way to this video because of the title, I, I'm in no way, shape or form trying to clickbait anybody. My audience wanted to talk about this. I was waiting to see when it was time to bring it forward. Now is the time. So if you found your way to this video and you're not into spiritual readings, this isn't the video for you. I would ask that you respectfully click off of this video instead of getting verbally abusive in the comments, okay? Uh, do not insult me, do not insult my audience, do not insult anybody's belief system. Let's just keep it cool, okay? Just another announcement. This is still very much up in the air. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing with this, but um, I'm, there's a possibility I may not be checking my PO box from, you know, I don't know, like just after the first week of April, maybe going well into May, so, Again, that's not a guarantee, but just to be safe, I want to let you know if you plan on sending me a package, especially, I don't think the post office will hang on to it for very long and they might send it back to you. So um, either before or after. And on that line of thinking, thank you all so much for the beautiful gifts that you send me and the beautiful cards, the letters, they mean the world to me. And it is not lost on me <laughs> that you guys would go around and, and get these things together or make something for me. And then especially you know, shipping in general, having to go to the post office and get it all set up, but especially when someone's sending something from halfway around the world, I know that involved paperwork. And I thank you so much. You guys are amazing and I love you. All right. So let's get into what are we talking about? What's going on here? I do need to say that I'm not a doctor. I am not with public health services or anything like that. Anything that is said here is just meant as a discussion. It's not meant for you to take this as your medical advice. For goodness sake, if you have symptoms, call your doctor to get instructions on what to do next. Okay. So there's a few things that we need to address here. There's the human aspect of it. And then there's the spiritual side of it. I will give you what I am getting as a reader. Every reader interprets uh, things differently, <laughs> okay? So this is just my interpretation of what is happening as it's coming through me. So first and foremost, the human aspect. I have, okay, let me back up. So as of the recording of this video, and I will probably post this early, this is not a typical thing that I would do. Usually I've been posting on Saturday morning and going live with you. I may just put this up you know, a few days early. But as of the recording of this video yesterday, there were some confirmed cases, or excuse me, one confirmed case in my county and two others, as far as I know, in Colorado in general. That's not, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be touching your face. Do not as I do, but my nose itches. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that's the other thing too. I've learned like how often I like sit like this or whatever, you're not supposed to touch your face, right? So I'm trying to be better. Uh, but as soon as that case was confirmed in my county, people were posting videos of people going crazy at Costco, trying to get toilet paper. Why? What, why, why toilet paper? That makes no sense to me. Comment down below. It's been driving me nuts. Why are people getting, it, it really genuinely concerned me because I was like, do people genuinely think that this is a stomach thing? I, what, comment down below. I don't know. But I will say that the more you pump into fear, the faster and harder something can get you. Okay. So, I mean, I'm trying to stay very, very positive about it. I'm pumping up my immune system. This is the human aspect of it. Of course, always check with your doctor, especially if you have an underlying condition. Yes. Or for children. Do not be careless with our children here. 
Oh, those are my kids. I gave birth. I, I respect <laughs> all love and respect for pregnancy and going into labor and delivering your children. But, you know, in the world, we are a tribe and those are our children too. We love them just as much, believe it or not. And we support you as parents. Uh, but please make sure that you are checking thoroughly with your doctors to make sure that it is safe to give your children certain whatevers, okay? So just so you guys know what I've been doing to pump up my immune system, elderberry. I swear by it. Again, check with your doctor, especially if you have diabetes or something like that to see if it's safe for you to have uh, and for children as well. Elderly, you know, what, if you have an underlying condition, as I said. So I believe huckleberry uh, here in Colorado Springs, that's a big thing. <laughs> Huckleberry everywhere. Uh, but again, double check me on that one. But elderberry, I swear by it. I woke up yesterday with a sore throat and I was like, okay, well, I know what to do. So I got my, my good elderberry. There's also a drink that I make that I love. This one would be pretty good for kids. But um, the drink that I make is, I think it's Uncle Mike's Organic Orange Juice. Check your organic section of your grocery store. But they have a turmeric infused orange juice. And... I put that, just like four to six ounces in my little Nutribullet with uh, like two tablespoons of coconut, vanilla flavored coconut creamer, okay? And you can put ice in it. So again, check with your doctor. I have to say that 20,000 times. You're going to hear me say it 20,000 times for my safety and yours, okay? Because uh, we don't need any trouble here. But um, if you have a child who has maybe an icky throat, like a sore throat, that OJ with a little bit of ice, it's still acidic. The OJ is still acidic. You have the creamer in there to kind of cancel that out, but you know, blend it up, make a nice little frothy smoothie, and that might be soothing for the throat. Again, be careful in the orange juice ratios, right? Now, what I do, because I'm trying to pickle myself, uh, <laughs> anti-aging, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I go to bed at night, just slathered <laughs> And creams and all kind of stuff. I don't know that it's working, but whatever. Uh, but I like to do that same drink. And I got this recipe off of a show, but I put two scoops of collagen powder in there with a little bit of Himalayan sea salt and the collagen makes it very frothy. Again, I wouldn't give the collagen to children. Double check me on that. I don't know how that goes. So those are just a couple of things. Just be mindful, be clean. Oh my gosh. Okay. So <laughs> I, I saw a conversation on Facebook last night, hang with me here, and people were like, oh my God, washing your hands, revolutionary. And I commented, I couldn't help it. I was like, listen, there have been so many times when I have seen people walk out of a public restroom without washing their hands or they do the fingertip wash. What are you doing? You ain't slick. We see you're nasty. I'm saying it right here, right now. You're nasty, okay? <laughs> Don't you become, oh, oh, my favorite is when people come in and they're like, well, I didn't use the restroom. No, you just went into the stall where people use the restroom and you touch the handle. I don't care what you're doing in there, all right? What's more, ladies, especially, you take your purses into public restrooms. For crying out loud, take a wipe and wipe down your bag. Everybody used to make fun of me for being a little too clean, they said. Michelle's nuts, they said. She scrubs her hands down like a doctor, they said. <sighs> Take a note, okay? <laughs> Take a note. Wash your stinking hands. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Like, wash your hands, okay? So, <laughs> anyway, I commented on this Facebook post. I was like, every time I see someone walk out of a public restroom without washing their hands, all I want to do is like yell and squawk and point. And everybody started responding, being like, I think it's the time for that. You know, go ahead and start calling people out and be like, uh, hello, you're a health risk. Okay, get back here. You nasty. Okay. <laughs> so wash your hands, take good care of yourselves and do not get into the fear. Again, the more you think of yourself as sickly, and I want to address people who do have those underlying conditions. I know this can be very scary for you. Uh, and yes, 100% take good care of yourselves, you know, do what you got to do, but try to remember I am healed. And yes, in a spiritual sense, people believe it or don't, you interpret whatever you want to. But the way I understand it is that a lot of times we do manifest health issues because it teaches us something, doesn't it? You know, when you don't take care of yourself, maybe there's some underlying emotional thing. And then you end up developing some sort of disease from that. What happens usually? Boy, you're right on learning how to turn your diet around, right? So it's not like you're being punished. It's not like, oh, you've done a bad thing. It's bringing awareness 
And that's all a part of being human. That's all a part of having this human story. Side note, I'm gonna start wearing my hair back. I don't even know if it's cute or not. I don't really care, but it is so freeing to not worry about whether my hair is sticking up. Maybe it still is. I don't know. It's curly hair. I can't do anything with it. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so just, you know, that will make you very aware when you're experiencing an illness. In some more extreme cases, it will make you very appreciative of the life that you have, right? This is not the time to be terrified, okay? <laughs> it's exactly what people have been saying. Stay calm. Now, a lot of you, because this is a spiritual channel and I'm a spiritual practitioner, you want to know what the heck the, the spiritual meaning is behind all of this. <sighs> this does not need to be. We have had for forever, <laughs> okay? Um... You know, I was living in New York City riding the subway during uh, I actually knew somebody who worked, she was in a different city, but she worked for the company that I worked for. She passed away from And I mean, I was there for all of that, <laughs> all of it. And the thing that I think kept me healthy through all of that was not being in fear. Now, I can't sit here on on this video and say, oh, I'll never get it. I don't know. I'm trying to stay positive. But if it does happen, I'm keeping myself well-educated about what to do, what steps to take. I would keep myself. Uh, I live alone, so I don't have to worry about anybody else. Uh, although I probably would alert property management and let them know that this is happening. I would contact my doctor by phone. What do you want me to do? You know? And I'm so I'm such a snow wimp that I've already stocked up my pantry because <laughs> I don't like driving in the winter. So like around October, I always stock up on everything. Or maybe I can't get toilet paper when I go shopping next week because everyone is buying toilet paper. Why? <laughs> What's with the toilet paper? Anywho, uh, so <laughs> I can't guarantee that that won't happen. But this is a consciousness thing, guys. If you notice every time there's some sort of uh, community crisis happening. It tests our panic levels, number one. But it, it's almost like it's poking us to go, have you figured out how to turn this around yet? P.S. It's not going out and trying to hoard all the supplies so that you can survive and maybe nobody else can. That's not what this is about. So just so you guys know, we failed. We failed. Whatever this is that we're supposed to be learning, we've already failed uh, because people are out there freaking out. So when we change our consciousness level, when we look at this and see it for what it really is, the more you panic, the more you're giving into the distraction. But Michelle, my fear is real. I, I really, I, you know, I have diabetes. I'm afraid of whatever is going to happen or I have this other disease and I, you know, I, I 100% get that, but you are loved and you are supported and you have power to become healthy. Of course you do. Michelle, don't say that to me. You think I would have chosen this? Uh, you and your third dimensional ego consciousness wouldn't have chosen it. But we have these souls that are here for these lessons. And that's where things get a little sticky tricky, right? Where we can't really fathom that once we're here. Even as I speak here, my nose is I'm getting sniffly. <laughs> I'm sorry that I don't think that's like a cold or anything like that but it's um because I knocked that cold out yesterday but anytime I wear contacts and makeup this happens so there's that uh but yeah th the whole idea here is to look at why why we give into this number one and two how do we take care of ourselves can we honor our bodies but it's teaching us something about how we treat each other and how we see each other. It's interesting, isn't it? Because now, what are you doing? You're kind of side-eyeing like anybody who gets a little cough or something like that. You're like, ooh, get away from me, creepy being. Like, get away from me. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. I am choosing to take a different kind of trip. Normally, I would fly. I'm driving. Is it because I'm afraid of getting this? <sighs> I have faith that whatever is going on, it's going to teach me something. But where I'm going, there are elderly people and small children. So in an abundance of caution, again, it's not like I'm terrified. It's just 
for right now until we kind of get this handled, okay, I thought it was better to drive. From here on out, I mean, depending on how things develop, I won't be afraid to fly because now like the airlines are going, oh, this is kind of a thing. We should probably clean these planes. Now they get it, <laughs> okay? But they hadn't gotten it when I was making my plans. So, you know, there's just some things, to, there's just some workarounds here. But the big spiritual takeaway is that consciousness, is the consciousness. What do we do for our fellow human beings? How do we see ourselves? Why aren't we discovering our own power? Why are we allowing ourselves to be so distracted? Do not let your frequency get lowered. This is not going to help you, okay? They're even saying now, you have the power to change this. There are these, and we're going to have a lot of these lessons for the next several years where things are coming up and we're like, why God, why? Right? When the answer is, when am I going to discover that part of me as a human being, as all of us as human beings, where we can change this? Right now, we're in a very, very deep sickness that, you know, I've been talking about for years, but nobody wants to listen. Well, not nobody, but like, <laughs> you know, a lot of people just kind of overlook it. That would be, you know, children being uh, sort of programmed and even abused in some situations. They grew up to be dysfunctional adults. Remember the wiring? I was always saying the wiring gets snipped. That's what you should be, you know, don't be scared about anything, but that's where we should be really putting our focus. Our mental health, how we treat children. What kind of adults do we become? How many times have you seen people going out and just acting, here you go, uh, people acting crazy and trying to hoard toilet paper. I'm not going to let that go, okay? <laughs> I'm just not going to let it go because I don't understand it. Uh, okay, moving on. But, you know, there are a lot of things that can, if we want to see it as being cured, okay, it can be cured by paying attention to it, giving it some awareness, giving it some love, making sure we're more careful with one another, not seeing our fellow human beings as somebody who can, you know, get us sick. Now, this gets complicated, so please hang with me. I know this may not be very, you know, streamlined here, but <laughs> bear with me here. Um, this, is, this is giving us uh, something to look at when, let's say, someone travels somewhere that is a known, well, let's say they went to China, Okay just because they wanted to see China, because they didn't want to be bothered to change their ticket or what have you. By the way, I bet a lot of airlines are allowing you to change your ticket with no cost. I don't know that for certain, but I would look into it if you feel like you need to. But just as a made up example, let's say somebody, um, do not do as I do. <laughs> don't touch your face. As I nose, I get the tinglies. But let's say somebody goes and travels to China and then they're like, oh, but I have to get back home because I have work to do or I have blah, blah, blah. See, we get so caught up on that surface level schedule that we come back in. Maybe we don't self-quarantine and we get right on another flight and we go somewhere else. Uh, that happened in one of the cases. Now, my nephew just went to Italy and he was there during the outbreak. Um, he hasn't been back for 14 days yet, but so far, so good. Um, so far, so good. But, you know, there have been people who have traveled and come and then hopped on another plane and just went elsewhere and then they test positive. Now, I can't sit here and say for certain that they did that. I, I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose. Okay, I'm not, I'm not implying that. But what I'm getting at here is that we don't put enough consideration into what might be going on. I could easily get on a plane and go fly somewhere. Okay, but I'm choosing to drive for the sake of people on the other end who could be very affected by this should I pick something up on a plane. Does that make sense? So as I said, this isn't very streamlined, but this is making us or kind of forcing us to look at do we consider others? How do you live your life and you kind of just bulldoze over whatever and you're just like, it's more important for me to keep my schedule than to keep other people safe. 
when do we put each other in harm's way? Where does that mental capacity come from? Where would that mental response, where does that come from? This is really asking us to question our priorities, okay? We could go deeper into this, but I think it would be boring, and <laughs> I don't even know if how I put it is going to make sense. But you need to stop and think. You know, we were talking about washing hands, and we might laugh about that and go, I know, some people are nasty, right? They're just nasty. On the serious end of things, what in their mind makes them think it's okay to walk out of a restroom without washing their hands, especially during times like this. We glaze over that way too much. I just went to the Garden of the Gods the other day and I'm walking around and there are people hacking and coughing and just like, <laughs> you know, and you're supposed to, I think in like preschools, they're calling that the Dracula cough. <laughs> they're like, oh, uh, but it was so inconsiderate. <laughs> I know that's like, there's not really a word to hit this, but because uh, it's more serious than that. But, you know, they're not thinking. And then I'm hiking around just trying to enjoy the day. And there was this family that took up the entire walkway to have a full on photo shoot. It's a beautiful place. It's a very popular place for people to take photographs. But usually if you just move a foot, that's all you get, a foot away, we can get past you and you can still have your perfect view, your little photo shoot, whatever you want to do. But these people made it impossible for anybody to pass. That was not lost on me. We were talking about last week about a seed being planted. One of the seeds that gets planted, especially in the spiritual community, is let it go. Don't pay attention to that. It's working so well, isn't it? Should you sweat the small stuff? No. Should you get yourself all upset? No. Should you start a fight? Absolutely not. Okay. However, do not let it get lost on you. These people are standing there with this sense of entitlement. And how many people are going to be so programmed to go, oh my God, what are you talking about? There, this is so not a big deal. Your way isn't working. We're going to change it. Okay? These people are being so inconsiderate of other people. They don't care what anybody else wants to do. It's just about them doing what they got to do. And they're preventing anybody else from living their lives, basically. And just, I just wanted to hike. That's all I wanted to do. And I couldn't do it because somebody else's free will is overtaking mine. So this person is standing there. You know, they've got their little camera and everything. They put the camera down. I start to go. And she's trying to have a, like, don't let this be lost on you. She started to have a power struggle with me and put it up again as if, like, you're walking through my shot. And I wasn't going to engage. I just want to hike. Okay? So I walked on through. But you know, there were other people behind me that just turned around and went the other way and gave in to these people who were being rude and quite frankly, obnoxious. Michelle, this is such a stupid example. You're programmed. You're programmed. I just did a go live for my, my weekly this morning. And there was a person on there who was going just under the radar. And this is, this, yes, this is absolutely <laughs> connected. Okay, there are people who are going to get infected because of how other people behave. So this is a part of it. it may not seem related, but I, I think it is. What's well, coming up, so we're doing it, okay? <laughs> like it or don't. Here we are. And so someone was getting in there, and at first they were just trying to combat everything that I was saying in the video. You're free to have your opinion, and you can express your opinion. But when you're doing it in a manner of you're wrong, and I'm right, now that's something different, okay? We need to start becoming a little more in tune and a little bit more of a heightened awareness around when that starts to happen. And I was like, well, you know, I'm talking about not having desperate energy. Please don't twist my words because that's what this person started to do. I deal with this all the time, guys, okay? I've had this YouTube channel for a long time. I do personal readings. By the way, if you'd like a personal reading, just go to angelsoulsfulfulfull.com. <laughs> hey, it's how I make my living, you know? If we want this content, I gotta, you know... I got to make a living here. So this person, you know, I, I called them out and it said, you know, I know what you're doing. 
I've seen this before. I know exactly what you're doing. And that person started to diminish me and then started going, don't listen to someone who's single about relationships. They don't know anything. Just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you're good at it, right? Doesn't mean you have more of a right (laughs) to talk about it or that you're more insightful than anybody else. So immediately I saw what was going on and I took that person right off my channel. I'm not going to do it. But before they left, they started to get to people. And people were even confused and going, wow, what was that all about? They had no perception. They did not see what this person was doing. That, that if anything's going to scare me, it's that. What slithers, okay? You have to be careful. Now, I don't want to diminish the image of the snake because, you know, kundalini and all that good stuff. <laughs> but, like, you know, I think it, I think it kind of works as, as an analogy here, you know, it's, you be careful. Be careful what's slithering just underneath the surface. Because those people are the ones who are bringing toxicity into this world. And that's how we're allowing it, by not being aware of it. And then it starts manifesting into disease. Pan- you think I'm wrong? Let's see, shall we? Let it play out. The old way isn't working. Try something new. So if you want me to cover more stuff on this, um, this is like a big topic. And so I just kind of wanted to, oh God, how long have we been here already? (laughs) Goodness me. So, you know, we're going to move on to the cards. If you have more questions about this that you want me to tune into, I can't guarantee that it'll come up for a reading, but leave your comment down below. We'll see. Okay. All right. So let's get the cards going here. Just remember, guys, there are bigger things going on than what's on the surface. So much so that people won't be able to make that connection. We need to start. That's, that's part of the expanded awareness. <laughs> it's just not like spiritual awareness or universal awareness. It's what we're doing right here in this story. This is not how the human story was supposed to go. It doesn't have to be this way. Okay. First card out we have is Croquite sexuality, this is interesting. You know, you could take this very literally, of course, but this is sacral chakra, guys. It's where we're manifesting from. It's what we're doing, (laughs) okay? So we need to be more mindful of what we're creating for ourselves and taking care of our bodies. And it really does come from the emotions, right? We're so fearful all the time. It's starting to come on out. Herkimer, my camera cut off, sorry. So... (laughs) I was pulling out Herkimer Diamond Dreams. Now, this feels like a lot of healing can be done in our sleep time, of course. I'm taking this quite literally given the topic of this video uh, that you need more rest. So that's the other thing too. We get so programmed to think that we have to go, 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 go until we're completely depleted. The medical community won't even acknowledge adrenal fatigue. It doesn't get called anything until your, your adrenals have had it. Don't be afraid to rest up. Don't be afraid to even do some dream programming, meditation, whatever you want to do. But I'm, I'm kind of going into the Herkimer Diamond part of this. It's an amplifier. That with the sexuality, it talk, talks about the sacral chakra. What you focus on amplifies. Let me say it again. You already know this, but let me tell you again. What you focus on amplifies. So now we have Emerald Compassion. So this is what is needed right now. This is what's being called for. We need to have more compassion for one another, more love. Stop, you know, what it is, and I'm so sorry I don't have the right words because there really are no human words to describe this. But we as humans, we get more focused on being right than finding resolution. I've said that before. We get more focused on being combative and, you know, uh, trying to have power struggles with people, trying to get one over on somebody else so that we feel like we win. There's no compassion. There's just no compassion. I gave the example of the people that were on that sidewalk holding everybody up. Why were they doing that? For power. Michelle, that's such a petty example. You're programmed. Fight me on it. Again, I know what I'm doing. (laughs) I know exactly what I'm doing and I know what I'm here for. No one's going to stop me. Okay. So this compassion card is talking about, yeah, we have to find the compassion within ourselves for other people. Make sure we're not getting caught up in that game. 
because it doesn't matter. All this stuff that we've been told that matters so much doesn't matter. And we'll keep experiencing these things until we get it. When do you want it to stop? Brazilianite flexibility. It's going to be a topsy-turvy time. And P.S. There's been some green here. Ha ha, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> but yeah, we need, to be, we need to kind of like go with the flow here. Do not overplan your days. Yes, structure is good. Structure is not a bad thing. But when things go awry, don't get crazy on people, okay? Uh, don't get crazy on yourself. Do not yell at your kids. Do not take it out on your kids, I swear. Don't you be taking it out on your kids. And don't let other people take it out on their kids. She said, what now? Yeah. Michelle, you're not a parent. You can't, excuse me. Excuse me. If I see somebody being verbally abusive to their child, you better believe I'm going to say something. Don't let that go. No way. All right. Let's get the color cards. Michelle getting feisty. You know how it goes. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get a color card. What I want to say, you guys all have my love. Every single one of you who's watching this, even if you are one of those people who you tend to be a nasty one, you, you don't wash your hands. You, <laughs> you like to yell at people. You like to have power struggles. I still love you too. Yes, I do. And if I could go back in time, right before you experienced any hurt and pain, and love you like a mother, I would do that. You can do that for yourself. You can reparent your inner child. <sighs> Sapphire, regenerate your body. The number is 38. How funny is that? And it reduces to 11. Master number. We've got a big old lesson happening right now. So getting in touch with our bodies, regenerating our bodies, and allowing them to kind of match with the new vibrational frequency that's coming in. We're starting to understand our true universal nature. Okay. In order to do that though, we need to be in tune with our bodies. We've gotten out of touch because again, you know, whether it's stress or the type of food that we take in or, you know, we can go on and on and on, but I think what this is saying is, you know, again, I just want to use that word awareness. I just want to keep using that word awareness. We need to upgrade our physical beings if we're going to expand in our consciousness, if we're going to uh, be able to find peace. To When we find peace, there's not going to be disease. Mm -mm. No. When we stop trying to fight one another, there's not going to be disease. Be careful who you're listening to. And I know this is going to be a little bit controversial what I'm about to say, but, you know, people really want to come down hard on the media. And I'm not saying that there aren't bad people out there in media, but I think there are a lot of good people in media, too, who are under the influence of someone else telling them how to do their job. So let's be careful with that. It's just like politics. The more you get revved up about that or religion, your belief systems, whatever kind of touchy, touchy thing <laughs> is out there, the more we get all like truly not, not, uh, sorry, I don't want to say this, not um, fired up in like, okay, I want to put good energy towards this. I want to bring awareness to this, but rather I'm just mad about this and I got to make everybody believe the way I do or else, you know, that's a different thing, guys. And we're not doing ourselves any sort of favors. Anyway, this has been the longest video ever. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with me. If you have made it through this far to the video, I am sending you all so much love. And peace.